Today in the shop, we have yet another failed Audi engine. This engine is a two liter turbo out of a 2017 Audi S3 with about 110,000 miles on it. And allegedly, it has a spun bearing. Now clearly, this thing is still put together, so I don't know what's actually wrong with it, but in this video, we're gonna dissect it and find out. By the way, they didn't say what bearing that they thought it was that was bad, so it could be a cam, could be a crank, could be a main. That's part of the fun of finding out. Now clearly this has already had some stuff taken apart, so that makes my job much more easier. This is our upper cover. You can see our timing chains right here. There is no tension on that chain. We're also missing our crank pulley, which means that our engine is super duper out of time. Let's get this lower cover off. Now I'm gonna point something out. This clearly has been taken apart. This does not have this white sealant on it from the factory. So we can go in knowing someone else has been in here before. These covers, if you ever have to do this job, by the way, timing job, these covers are these covers are basically one-time use. It's possible to get these out without bending them, but you usually end up bending like down here on the corner because they're like welded on from, uh, from the factory. Here is our timing chain. Here is our balance shaft chain. And here is our oil pump chain. Now, normally if we were doing this tear down to put it back together, we would put the crank tool on there, pull the pulley off properly. But since we don't have any of that, I'm not gonna do that. Also, normally I don't rebuild these engines that we do teardowns on because they're so far gone beyond belief that it's just not worth it. This one, I'm gonna take apart with the mindset that we're gonna rebuild it. So I'm gonna up my level of organization considerably for this job. This engine had 107,000 miles on it. And the story is apparently it had some misfires, there were some repairs done, and then the engine got nuked. So we, we, we may be doing a little more investigation than kind of I initially thought, just trying to find that spun bearing, because now I want to know like what actually did happen. For the sake of everything being easier to see, let's get the turbocharger off next. Now this turbocharger is an IS38, basically the S3 and the Golf R, for this vintage anyway, have the same powertrain setup. Changes a little bit with Mark 8, but in 2017, they're basically the same. Also, I just got this new engine stand, not really for this engine, but for a future project that's gonna require a special engine mount to mount up to this thing. So stay tuned for that, because it's gonna be awesome. Be real careful with these lines. They can be a pain in the butt to get off. Hey, I didn't just get splooshed with coolant. That was nice. This is a thousand times easier out of the car than it is in the car. We recently did a turbocharger on a seven and a half, I think, Golf R. We did the full breadth of integrated engineering stuff. You wanna save some money on buying IE parts, I'll put a link down in the description. With the turbo out of the way, I can twist these lines a little bit. Should make them a little easier to come off. It was kind of a big development when these Gen 3s came out that the exhaust manifold was built in and part of the cylinder head. Allegedly, that led to better cooling. Next up, I'm gonna take the cam bridge off. That way we can inspect the cams. Based on all of these T30s, it looks like somebody follows my torque, paint, and then go 90 degree. Uh, tip there. Now you might be wondering, Charles, it had a spun bearing. What the heck are you doing on the top side of the engine? Well, if we only looked for the problem we know about, we might miss something, get a bunch of parts, run into a problem when we go back together with it. So we have our cams, top side. Ooh, uh-oh. All right, let me uh, do a little bit more looky look here. Ugh. All right. Oh, I should look at that cam bridge actually. Oh, it's, it's cooked. With our cam bridge off, our cams are now exposed. Uh, and it has revealed on our intake cam, it looks like all four journals are just cooked. So normally what I'll do is I'll take my glove off, I'll run my fingernail on the journals and see is it smooth or does it catch the tip of my nail? And these feel very unhappy on the intake cam. The exhaust cam, on the other hand, seems okay. There's a couple of lobes that look a little unhappy, but we got sadness on the cam. We got sadness in the cover too. So I don't think that's the spun bearing 
that we've been talking about. We've had some kind of oil starvation issue on the top side of the cylinder head, which it's never good to have that anywhere on a turbocharged car. I'm a whole lot less excited about rebuilding this potentially now, finding that we have some cylinder head uh, issues. Let me get the cam set out. And then I think after that, we'll take the cylinder head off and just get it completely out of the way so we can do a full inspection on the bottom end. TSI, what does TSI stand for? Totally sucks engineering, but you gotta spell engineering with an I. By the way, if you ever take a cylinder head off on a Volkswagen, bolts are all always one-time use, like half the dang car. But save these, they make good punches for various assorted jobs, because they're pretty strong bolts. Actually, I think a couple of the bolts that are holding the engine to the stand are old cylinder head bolts. I'm gonna take this off, I'm gonna flip it, and we're gonna look at the other side just to make sure nothing's super goofy there. How's it look? I can't see. All right. I don't see anything too weird, so it's basically a boat anchor anyway with how damaged those cam journals are. One of the good things about the Gen 3 TSIs is they don't get carbon buildup. These are the, uh, <laughs> the little divider plates that go in the intake ports. If that were a Gen 2, like a CCTA, they would have probably stuck in there because it would have been full of carbon. Fun fact about this bracket, not only does it house our oil filter and our oil cooler, it's our serpentine belt tensioner, has oil running through it and coolant running through it. If there is a more German thing than this right here, I would love to know what that is. This is such a main bracket to this engine. And man, what a overcomplicated mess. Look at that. This is where all your oil and your coolant passages are. We can go ahead and go all the way around. Hey, we only lost a little bit. Normally this is when I get completely juiced. This car has two separate oil pans. It has the metal oil pan you see here, and then an upper oil pan, which is aluminum. The way you're looking at it, it's a lower pan. So we just gotta go with it. Holy glitter. That is some glitter. That's likely our bearing material. I mean, that's bad. Wow. Well, uh, that's bad news. I haven't seen one this glittery in a while. Cooked. Let's get this pickup and this windage tray off. This prevents oil from sliding all through the oil pan, right? So like, say you're in the mountains and you're ripping back and forth. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Your oil is also sloshing back and forth. Something like this prevents it from going all the way to the one side on like a long sweeping turn and then not having any oil where the pickup is. Oh man, this top side of this. This is just more of that schmutz from the, uh, from the bearing. I'm gonna take the oil pump off next. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna rig something up to rotate the engine around so we can get a good look at all of the journals and everything in the block. Oh, uh, look, oh wow. It's all schmutzed on top of the oil pump too. This feels like one of those cars that just ran low on oil maybe, or maybe had somebody flogging it while, uh, while it was cold. Let's take this upper pan off first, then we'll rotate the engine around a bunch of times. It's actually really major surgery to take this upper pan off. You have to pull the transmission off because of the rear main seal. You can see it sticking up right back here. You gotta get those two bolts out. Oh my God, there's a bolt stuck. Just kidding, I think I dropped that one. Ah, uh, is it one of the aluminum ones? Of course. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> oh well. I would normally worry about damaging this crankshaft, but I don't think it's gonna matter a whole bunch. And of course, it's one of the aluminum ones. You know what, before we... Oh, I'm guessing that's our spun bearing, cylinder one, bouncing all around. Let's go ahead and pull that one off, see how bad it is. I'm guessing once they got to the, oh boy, cylinder one sounds toasty, they just stopped, because why would you really go any further? Oh, wait a minute. Where's the bearing? I almost said a no-no word. I think you guys probably know what I was gonna say. It's um, no longer serviceable here. Where's the whole bearing? The bearing's gone. Like I can see the oil hole in the crank and I don't have an actual bearing. Maybe they pulled the bolts off and took the bearing out. Oh, this one spun too. Damn. Cylinder one, we saw it wobbling all around, right? I was clunk, clunk, clunk. I don't know if we were maybe like the symptom was a knocking noise. This, this, this should have been somewhere on here on the journal or on the connecting rod. <laughs> look at what just pure scorch that looks like. Just look at it. It's so bad. Just look at it. It's so bad. 
Yikes. So we didn't just have one spun bearing, we had two spun bearings. I have not seen a TSI do this. Likely some sort of oil starvation. Could be car was cold, fired it up, didn't give it any time to get warm, and then just immediately hammer the throttle. We've seen that on other Audi engines, right? Remember that S4 engine or something like that, that three liter supercharged one? Pretty sure that's what happened to that. That one got so bad the engine seized. Wow, it's kind of incredible, really. I'm gonna pull the, oh, wait a minute. Oh, I see the bearing. I see the remnants of the bearing. Needless to say, <laughs> that ain't not ungood. Let's take uh, cylinder two and three out and see, see how bad these are. Did this one spin too? This one spun too. So what, what could cause oil issues, right? No oil in the car, an easy one. Something clogging that oil pickup that we saw a little bit ago definitely can cause it. You might be able to salvage the rods, but why bother? There's no point. Well, the cool thing is we went four for four with absolutely destroyed connecting rod bearings. These things are just horrible. They're bad. I think even that three liter supercharged engine had at least a couple of rod bearings that were good, but uh, man, cylinder two, three, four, one, nuked. What I need to do next is take the main caps off. So the main caps, those are the ones that hold the crankshaft into the engine block. After that, I can get the crankshaft out and show you exactly what happens when a bearing spins and why it does what it does like you saw in this engine. Oh man. Compared to how our rod bearings looked, this looks, this looks amazing. We got a little bit of bluing on the crankshaft, but as far as like the journals go or the bearings go, I mean, it's okay. That one looks good. That one smelled weird though. Anybody know why that happens? It's weird smells sometimes when you take these off. It's a legit question I have. Oh, cooked! <laughs> it's just a joke at this point. Absolutely cooked. I'll show, I'll show you in a second, don't worry. This bad boy is in there. Don't try this one at home, kids. There we go. Oh yeah, she's not as bad as I was hoping for how much I struggled to get, <laughs> to get that out, but definitely bad. Okay, so this is definitely one of the worst that I've seen come through on the engine teardown side. I mean, the engine wasn't seized, but boy oh boy, just look at this thing. It's bad when this looks good compared to the bearing that just disintegrated. So the unfortunate part, we're not gonna ever know exactly what happened. All we can really do is sort of pontificate about what all went on. Did they do an oil change and not put oil in it and go drive the car? Did it run low on oil? I mean, look, it's a TSI, so it very likely could have just ran low on oil. Did it fire up instant cold start, immediately hammer the throttle. People do that kind of stuff, I don't know why. You shouldn't, don't ever do that. But basically, we have an engine that is now absolutely trash. The block seems okay, but I don't even think it's gonna be worth that because we're just gonna need so much extra. So I had said that I thought it was a spun bearing, that was the diagnosis that they got when I got the engine. What does that actually mean though? Let's use our connecting rod as an example of what happens when a bearing spins. So within this opening go these pieces of a bearing. They're generally two halves and they go like this. So when you torque down the cap for the connecting rod, it locks these two in place. So they don't rotate, they don't spin, they don't move. You see that little tiny notch right there? That'll keep it locked in place. And it's important to remember they don't go metal to metal. Well, ours did, but in, in general, they don't go metal to metal. All these parts ride on a very thin film of oil. Well, when you eliminate that small, thin, really tiny, tiny film of oil, eventually they start to go metal to metal. They get hot, they expand, they contract, and they'll start grabbing. And then instead of the bearing being locked in place, it starts to rotate. And oftentimes you'll see damage inside of this opening on the connecting rod. So if a bearing spins, it's pretty bad news as you can see here. Cause I don't know that this is the worst individual one, but this is probably the most widespread of an issue. Now, here's another reason why I don't think taking all this and rebuilding it makes a whole lot of sense. All that sparkle that we saw is only part of it. That gets blasted through the entire engine, which means there's sparklies in the turbocharger, which means there's likely sparklies 
inside of the cam variator that we would either have to completely disassemble and clean. We had damage in the cylinder head and the cam bridge. We had damage on the camshaft, at least on the intake one anyway. It's cooked, there's, there's no point. Could you do it? Absolutely. And I think that's an important thing to make sure I differentiate. You 100% could rebuild all this, but you're gonna spend a ton more time and a ton more money then you get a good core engine and rebuild that. Even if it had like bent valves because the timing chain failed, you'd be in a way better position than we are right now. So unfortunately, off to the scrapyard, this stuff will go and we will come back another time with another engine that will rebuild. So with that, I'm gonna wrap it up. Big thanks to my buddies at Apex Tuning for holding this engine for us so that we can deep dive and see just the catastrophe that it ended up being. If there's another engine you wanna see torn down, drop that in the comments. With that, I'm out, have an awesome day, unlike this engine, uh, and I'll talk to you again next time.